faster than a speeding bullet. I ran until my muscles burned and my veins pumped battery acid. More powerful than a locomotive. An idea is like a virus. Resilient. Highly contagious. Able to leap tall buildings with a single bound. Hey guys, Jared Moon here from Into 3 Fitness and welcome to the Better Humanology podcast. Today we have Dr. Mike Wasilison and Andrew Dettelbach here from Move You. Uh, you can check out all their stuff at moveyou.com. Really cool conversation, great energy from these guys and we talk a lot about movement and mindset and we really focus on that mindset piece quite a bit. You'll see we have a lot of overlap and a lot of things in common in how we approach health and fitness but we also talk about other things on how to move your body and you know things that might be holding you back in your limitation or what might be causing pain. So check this episode out. I think that you're really going to enjoy it. All right, Mike, super pumped to have you on the Better Humanology podcast, man. Welcome. Dude, thank you so much for having me, Jared. Love the work that you're doing. You guys are making the complex and confusing and inconvenient very simple. And that's where I can I feel resonance between us, and I'm just happy to be here, man. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, you know there's a, definitely a lot of overlap there, and that's one of our missions for sure, simplifying as much as necessary, but not beyond that. But we're gonna get started with from you, fitness challenge. Andrew, fitness challenge. Huh? Fitness challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, man. I don't like to go hardcore fitness. I, I would actually focus first on breathing techniques. Um, can you actually separate your your ability of breathing between your chest and your diaphragm without one or the other moving? Can you breathe through your chest without your diaphragm moving and vice versa? That's something that most people absolutely struggle with. And it is probably the most important thing you should be able to do in any exercise is understand your breathing patterns. Uh, everything else after that doesn't really matter. If, if, if you understand your breathing patterns, Everything else gets easier. So, awesome. You, that's good, Andrew. Good job. We will pick that one up. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I was just I was writing that down. Hundred push-ups for time. <laughs> well, see, no, that that's what I love about this challenge is uh, I, I have no preconceived notion on what the fitness challenge is going to. I mean, it could be you know like crack your toes at the end of the day. I don't, you know, whatever the fitness challenge is uh, to to whoever I'm talking to. So I think that was that was awesome. All right, and well, how, how about a mental toughness challenge? Man, I'll tell you, mental toughness challenge, Jared, we generally, what we do is we help people improve their foundation. We help them move and align their body properly and, and then strengthen their body in that position. It, what that requires though, and especially people that are struggling with any kind of pain or injury, or even they don't, they're not confident in the way they look, they, they notice some asymmetry in their body. The mental challenge is this, is don't focus on fixing the problem. Don't focus on fixing, focus on the challenge is focusing on improving in baby steps every single day. A little 1.2% improvement today, 0.6% improvement today. How did you improve today? If you focus on that long-term fix, you get anxiety because the mountaintop seems so far away. But if you focus on the problems of the past, it creates depression. I used to be here and sadness. Instead, focus on making little baby steps today. Awesome, Mental man. Toughness. That is, yeah, that is mental toughness. That kind of the uh, Kaizen principle, right? You know, one percent improvements uh, over the course of time is what really builds you up into a better human being. All right, Wait. now book recommendation: either a book that you absolutely have loved over the course of time, something you recently read, um, maybe one from each of you. Well, it's funny because I probably read five books a month, and I think Andrew's read five books in five years. Is that right, Andrew? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I, I, so. <laughs> Andrew, you always talk about a recent book you read. One of the, I think the only one this year. Uh, there's a few. Um, the You Are the Placebo by Dr. Joe Dispenza is incredible at uh, describing how how your mindset, how your positive thinking actually causes cellular and, and DNA changes in your body and how that actually creates physical changes, not just foofy you know, thoughts, but, but really showing scientific data on, on the physical changes that your positive thinking provides. And I think that's awesome. We talk about the placebo effect all the time in this podcast, because who really cares if it's a placebo effect that's making you better? It's something that is actually making you better. So that book, I think just jump, jumped to the top of my list. I have not read it, but I definitely want to. Uh, all right, Mike, how about you? Well, you know, my, 
because we're in the process, right? We help people transform their body. Uh, like we said, most people, they're, they, they try to tend to go for this fix and they get frustrated because they don't get there. People aren't able to, they're, people aren't able to quote, fix them. And the truth is, is you, they're, Nobody's going to care about your body like you will. And nobody will ever understand your problems like you will. And for that, I recommend the book Mastery Concise Edition by Robert Greene. Uh, the whole book talks about uh, Robert Greene explains in very detail through tons of examples about the process of mastering anything, whether you want to master a sport, whether you're mastering a uh whether it be a profession and just the, the overall process, there's so much overlap between the true masters like Leonardo da Vinci and Beethoven and getting into, I think they were even getting into Einstein and other great people who have achieved success, um, the pr actual process it takes. And whenever you understand that process of mastery, simply applying that to principles of movement in the body, it makes the process um, – it makes you, you know what you're getting into. It provides you the plan. It goes, wow, this process is going to have ups and downs. It's going to be a journey. It's not going to be just one big jump. So that process really helps uh, bring peace to people's mind. It helps them see the path to success. So Mastery, Robert Greene, Concise Edition. Awesome, man. I just jotted that down. Definitely going to check that one out as well. Guys, I appreciate the challenges and the recommendations. So let's uh, hop into a little bit more, maybe some background uh, on the two of you, but and then also... Tell me a little bit more about Move You, how you guys got started and, and what you're you know, passionate about doing right now. Yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> all right, Jared. So my background in the year 2000, I got into um, chiropractic, sports rehab. It just kind of like in a funky way. I was like literally a pizza delivery boy, delivering pizzas to a chiropractor. And I just like liked this lifestyle. It was a town of Cortland, Ohio. There's 4,000 people there. He was the epitome of success. It was like, wow, he has a practice. So I've got into chiropractic. Um, and just honestly, I, I just went with it. Uh, if I would have done it again, I never would have chosen the route that I've chosen to this date. Um, but I get into chiropractic and then I decided to, I got a bachelor degree in kinesiology. I'm sorry, at psychology at Kent state university pre-med chose to go into chiropractic school, go through chiropractic school, graduate 2009. But honestly, along the way, something Jared's wasn't connecting. Uh, the philosophy was there but the technique of this this tool of an adjustment that they gave us, that they taught us, I, I just never connected with the power of it. Um, I never connected with with chiropractors really in general. And so I, I started seeking like what I thought was truth. And I turned to movement. I found Titleist Performance Institute, Active Release, whatever, Grastin, Kinesio Tape, McKinsey, Voita, all these different – movement based approaches to helping to helping people because we're in school most people see us with pain have pain and then improve upon that and so i came out here in 2009 got in the profession and it was uh honestly it's been it, it was a struggle 2009 all the way to 2017 it was a, it was a straight struggle uh, i'm not gonna lie it was like I don't want, I would look in hindsight. There's not much I really enjoyed about that. I pushed through and up opening a practice. Um, but along that journey, there were some, there were some great, uh, pieces of gold that fell in my lap. One of them was I had an opportunity to, uh, from the Dean of Kinesiology at California state university. She offered me a teaching position at Cal state San Marcos. And, um, and I took the position instantly and from day one i fell in love i realized one of my loves in life is teaching absolutely love 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 teaching and i'm um, just talking in general it's just talking in general <laughs> <laughs> fits perfect for and, podcasts huh? <laughs> it's perfect. and andrew was one of my very first students at cal state he was my in the first class and um andrew became a, a teacher's assistant and intern and um he was the first in, then he became the first employee at Cal State, which I always go, how? I mean, the first employee at, at Cali Spine. I started a business called Cali Spine in 2013. And the whole purpose was to help people with back pain, help be the number one company in the world to help people with back pain live a pain free life. Like, that's what I thought it was. And um, Andrew was like first employee. And at the same time, he actually, it was interesting because uh, it was, he ruptured a disc in his low back, like a massive herniation. You want to tell a story, Andrew? Sure. Uh, 2013, I was still in school and I was working with this guy and I, wow, 
and I herniated my L4, L5 like 10 millimeters to the left, and I bulged it 8 millimeters to the right. So I just smashed my disc. Uh, I had sciatica down both legs, couldn't really do anything. Um, I'm like barely going to the bathroom, couldn't sleep, couldn't, could barely crawl, you know. For, I did that for about a year. And I had three surgeons tell me I needed to have surgery, went to a bunch of doctors, saw a bunch of people. Mike didn't help me all that much with his Cairo crap. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I think it actually made it worse. <laughs> but, I was uh, like, yeah, it'll feel better when it stops hurting. It's part of the healing process. <laughs> I spent a good two years just, just exploring my body and, and understanding you know, what, it, what it needed. And I, at, throughout the time, I injured my my I had hip impingement, shoulder impingement, uh, knee injury. While all this was happening, everything was just falling to shit. And I learned so much about my body. And at the same time, I was teaching. I was I was working with. Oh, my gosh. We worked with hundreds of patients and did all various injuries. And I realized over time that the same movements and exercises needed to be applied to every single person, no matter what their injury was. Um, if they came in with a shoulder or a foot injury, I'd have them do the same. Shit. I would always make it complex. I'd be like, yeah. Andrew, I had the patient I'm like, okay, Andrew, the 12 degrees posterior tilt on the left, this, this hernia, this hernia. He would just look at me like, yeah, okay. I'm going to have him learn the same shit. <laughs> I couldn't sink it into my head. I like wasn't connecting with the simplicity of this. And everyone was improving. Everyone did great. The, the only thing was that we weren't empowering people to do it on their own. They would come in here and expect us to help them with it. And that's when we started to, we, we created this Instagram following and it was growing up. It got to like 20,000. We're like, what are we going to do with all these people? We could help the whole world. <laughs> and so we started to create move you and started to think about making a program for online. And you know, now we've got 445,000 and we got this online program going, we're building more and growing more. It, and you had a, in the back that up a little Andrew trailed off. Nice ending there, Andrew. You like that? No, I just <laughs> current day. It's terrible. That's you how trailed I speed off. Up stories. Man. It's a terrible ending. All right, let me back that up a little bit. So, in, in the year 2016, myself, Jared, I was so I was just frustrated, man. Honestly, I was just frustrated with everything. It was just like the business wasn't really growing, and I wasn't motivated to grow it. I thought it was me. I had a responsibility to like make sure, like to like look out for Andrew and Marisol, and I'm like, we're not growing. And I was just like disappearing with like hobbies and shit. And then I just said, fuck it. I can't take this anymore. And I just, this is like, a, I'm going all in. Like I looked at all of us. I'm like, dude, almost every successful business started in a fucking garage with, can I swear? Yeah, uh, you're, you're good. <laughs> almost every successful business started in a garage. I mean, you got like Apple and Disney and Harley. And it's like, I'm looking around. I'm like, why not us? Why not me? Hey, look at Andrew's story. We have Marisol and myself and with and she's doing the website stuff. It's like, why is it not us? We we're so passionate and we care and we know the solution. The problem was Jared is that it's so fucking inconvenient to literally go see a chiropractor or PT. It's like, it's like stone age prehistoric. It's like going to the DMV and you got to do that over and over. People just weren't complying. Like we knew what they needed, but we couldn't deliver it to him through the vehicle of healthcare. And so I said, that's it. We're out of healthcare. It's over. And we're like, do I support this system that's broken and make it better? Or do we just start our own and just be our own entity? And we decided to found Move You. And we're a physical education company. And what we do is we empower people. We empower people to take ownership of their body and lives through proper body movement and developing a, a killer mindset, a winning mindset, a positive mindset. And so that's become the Move You program, which is a which is a sequential. It's a program consisting of over 170 training exercises, physical and mental, all to be done, all sequential. Each one builds upon the previous one, helping people literally ratchet up their progress. And the results are unbelievable. They're they're literally. I cry every day reading these testimonials, and it's like, man, this is the program for the world. This is this is the program. This is what we're here to do. Like it would be a shame for this not to get to the level. It would be like people's lives are being lost if we don't get this to people. So that's the driving force today is how amazing the results are. And uh, so that's where we are today. Now the future looks amazing. You know, we got merchandise stores. We're launching different programs. We're starting to travel, do coaches training programs, work with pro athletes. So it's like, dude, it's blown up, Jared. It feels amazing to be doing something that feels so right. And it's so true. And it's so needed. That's awesome, man. Now, a few follow-up questions. Uh, love your passion and just – you know, the getting out of the broken system to, to do your own thing. I, you know, that's very inspiring and, uh, 
sounds like maybe you you got your spark once you finally decided <laughs> to do that, you know, and uh, yes. you didn't yeah. have to you fall back. But I, I, I want to hear more about this 2009 to 2017. I think it was you said period. You said it was a struggle. Uh, you know, what was the what was the struggle? Was it being part of trying to be a part of that healthcare system that was just broken and not working? Yeah, looking in hindsight, man. Well, first of all, Jared, uh, my I'm I'm my mind my mind is not designed to be indoors from nine or eight until six p.m. every single day working on people. It just it causes you know it, you end up being a slave. I end up being a slave to my own business and just glued to it, unable to leave. And when I left, we lost money, and it just became a frustrating environment to be just show up every day and do virtually the same thing and repeat the same thing over and over to people. Uh, look in hindsight, that frustration was necessary. It was it was 100% part of the process. Like 2009, I started working with, I moved out here to work with Titleist Performance Institute, came out here with them, and I, I was basically thrown the keys. I thought I was going to get mentored. This dude threw me the keys and goes, here you go, run this thing. And he left. I was like, okay. Then I went to, uh, then I went within another gym called Azaya. Uh, it's now called Nicoa Performance, where I learned a lot about culture and I learned about community, and that was amazing. And like each thing, each part of it, right? The the, the pain, frustration from each one. You, you take these little morsels, but what what I would do differently if I could do it again, and what I got out of it. So each part was necessary. This frustration, I wouldn't be so passionate today, and, and I wouldn't be so frustrated and use that frustration to help people if it wasn't through the, my own struggles that I went through. Um, so yeah, then we we launched. Um, where was I with that? Um, yeah, the, the frustration, man, it just, it literally came to a boiling point. It really did. I go, that's it. And I've always like believed that I'm here to like do big things, like to really change the world. I've always believed that I've always like even drawn that. I believe that I was like here for bigger things. I never knew what though. And I was always seeking Jared. I was trying to start beef jerky businesses. Andrew, what about the gun part? Oh man. <laughs> what was that? A gun part that was needed for like a Ruger. And I was good. Then I, I tried to start like an online dating site. And you know what's funny? It's like the book, The Alchemist. It's like you go out search, search, searching for all these answers and it guides you. The answer is right. You already had it inside you the whole time. <laughs> and But it took – and this is what I tell people too, Jared, is that – you know, and I, there's somebody I know that I care about dearly right now. And fortunately, she moved into a different position. But I believe that people can be just planted am- – people are amazing and meant to do amazing things. Every person has a special gift. But if you're planted in the wrong soil, you'll never flourish. And it didn't – it wasn't until that myself, I got out of that model of healthcare and was able to let my true voice come through like uninterrupted. Because in practice, Jared, oh, we can only say this because this surgeon referred us. Oh, we don't want to say this because this doctor referred. And you end up being a fucking brick in the wall because you're not even – you're just speaking what you think people want to hear. But when we separated from all that stuff, I don't, in my head, I'm like, I don't care about chiropractors. I don't care about the PTs. I don't care about the surgeon. Let them hate me. There's only 100,000 of them and there's billions of people. So – it, it allowed my true voice to just blow through, like just go through unfiltered. And I was like, holy shit. Wow. I was just planting the wrong soil the whole time. And, you know, we help people as well. that are stuck in their life, like find the right soil and to like get out of their comfort zone because I know what it's like to be like that. I know what it's like. Andrew, you got anything in there about that time That's frame? Great. That time frame? I, I mean, I'm just, a, I'm a grinder. I think, I think about like today and what's happening today. Mike's always thinking about the future and I'm like, my goals are right now, today, like this week, and I don't think I really focused as much on. I, I was unhappy for sure. Yeah, but I was just getting shit done still mm. every day, just doing the work. Mm. And Andrew, Andrew, I'd love to hear a little bit more about. Uh, you talked about your your injury. Um, what was the the process? Is it is it what is now the move? You you know courses that you guys have is that the process that you went through to fix your back? What did you do to kind of? Because I've I've uh, you know had some friends and athletes who have had significant injuries like that uh, and they get you know tossed around to a million different doctors surgeons different recommendations and stuff so i'd like to hear about your journey and and actually fixing that just because i know it could help so many people listening right now yeah. well the, the first part was that i didn't really know what to do physically for about a year i wasn't given like the tools that are in the movie program um, so, so I kept doing the five exercises that I had printed on my sheet for literally a year and, you know, exploring some motions here and there. And it improved very slowly over that time. There was this, the mindset component is the most important though. Like I said, I get, I, I wake up and I do my stuff every day and 
I knew that I would be back to lifting and I wasn't in a hurry. I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. And I know that I'm going to be lifting. I know what I'm going to be traveling, doing what I want. I don't know when it'll happen, but it'll happen. I, that was the, that was in my mind every day. And yes, I would, I would sit there and cry and it, you know, I would, I was in a shitload of pain all the time. And at the same time, I knew I was going to get over the hump. Um, a lot of people miss that component. They think they're, they're stuck and, I don't know how to describe it. I just knew that I'd make it. And a year later, I, I met a CrossFit coach who is by far one of the most technical human beings on the planet. And he actually didn't let anyone do CrossFit in the gym. That's, kind of, is, that's why I quit. That's why it kind of fell apart. But <laughs> that man, but he's amazing. Amazing. That man changed my life. And I, I he's he's honestly helped to change hundreds of thousands of lives just by by teaching me. There's some of those techniques. And I, I branched off and I learned a lot from what he taught me and I expanded on what he taught me a lot more. But it was really that seed that he planted in my mind about movement and proper bracing techniques, scapular control, um, foot activation. Like he went crazy and, and all that stuff with me. And, and I was back to deadlifting and squatting and all that stuff within another year. So it was like two years before I was actually lifting weights again. Awesome, man. And so let's dive into move you a little bit more. Um, you said 170 different exercises all built off of uh, one built off of the previous, right? So how, how long did it take to develop this, uh, this programming, if you will? I want to say that we developed the program over it, those years, over those years. So I mean, really, it was since, you know, my knowledge came from a lot of the assessment stuff with FF, FMS, SFMA. So I brought all that to the table uh, with Andrew, but Andrew, he really now, looking looking back right now, what I thought I knew, I only knew on a surface level. He under, he learned the depths of it by committing to the process, not just learning the exercises in a weekend seminar. So that was like – that led up to 2013. So there was that knowledge push from like myself, like working with Andrew and then Andrew's injury and then working with hundreds of people. So I mean realistically, that thing was a, a, a culmination of, of just, I don't even know how many, how many years, just practice, nine practice, years, practice. but then we ended up, um, we really started hitting the pavement and move you was, we found it actually found the company in October, 2016. And I want to say, Andrew, when did you start building? Now, Andrew, just for the record here, Andrew is much higher IQ than I do. He's much more like attention to detail and more technical. I'm big picture, Jared. I'm like shotgun. I pull the trigger, blow shit down away. <laughs> big picture, shotgun approach. It's this simple. Let's move forward into it. And Andrew is that day to day. He will dissect this movement into like, and put it in, 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 dissect movement in the most individual components and order it like that's his he's better at that than me so um when did you start putting that together andrew do you remember and how long did it take for you to actually october i started it like mid-october and i finished beginning of december oh really about a month and a half for all the videos yeah i mean non-stop i was doing on top of working in cali spine i was doing like all all night all morning (laughs) we didn't know what we were really doing we just decided we're like we this is what we know that's helped that, that the world needs based on our sample size of like 10,000 people we've seen. And we just went, we literally, it was, I mean, we just spent yeah, thousands we, of hours. We're hoping that it was going to connect. The, the thing is, you know, there's 170 exercises and there could be another 170,000 exercises in there. It doesn't really matter about, about the exercises themselves. It's, it's, it was about the progression and there's a bunch of exercises that you could replace them with and that's fine and everything. But it was just about getting, giving people a guide to start. Um, there is no single exercise or group of exercises that's going to get you better. It's the culmination of everything together over time that is going to make the differences for you. Mm-hmm. So who is your typical the, the, the typical person, athlete? customer who comes to move you like what are they broken or are they just looking to improve what they've already got like how, what is the the typical person who shows up yeah i'll give you our stats right now and we're building another program right now for the other people we have two audiences we've got our organic audience and those people tend to want that's 25 to 34 year old 70 uh, percent male 30 percent female and those people tend to want a couple exercises and a couple things to do um those people are generally you know aches and pains this and that improve posture here and there um that we do not currently have a product for them that should be launched in 45 days. Um, the product that we do have is designed, it's designed to help people that are first and foremost, that 
have that are limited with chronic pain or limited with pain. 88% of people that enroll in the program um, have tried chiropractic PT or massage and failed at those. Um, 90% of people enroll because of back pain or hip pain. Uh, I think like there's some overlap, like 10, 15% is knee and then shoulder. So, I mean, our heart and soul, the truth is what I'm hands down best at, and so is Andrew, it's back pain. I mean, that's what we're best at. But Jared, along the journey, what we've learned is this, is we're like, oh yeah, back, back, back. But Einstein says if the part, the part can't be well unless the hole is well. So we've learned along this journey that we start with back pain and then we're like, well, wait, if the core is braced, the shoulders are forward. So then we got to do scapular work to get it back. Then, then people are like, my shoulder pain is amazing. This bed's gone. I'm like, oh, that fixes that. Well, then the knee turns in. So it ends up starting with the back, but it's a full body approach. It's head to toe, head to toe, talking everything. But the program generally, the average person in there is about 35 years old. Half of them have kids. Um, people get in there because they want to change. They really, because the program is a commitment, Jared. It's no joke, man. It is literally, you're talking to complete both parts of the program, you're talking, people are investing 200 hours into both parts of the program. It is no joke. I'm talking daily work for three and a half months, uh, 15 minutes to an hour a day, applying it. So the program is meant for somebody who's like, that's it, I'm sick of this shit, I'm ready to go. The other group of people, the small 10% are people like trainers, coaches, chiropractors, physical therapists who want to improve themselves to want to improve themselves first so they can better help others. That's the other group of people that are enrolling. And for that, we're going to be moving into a coach's training program coming up real soon, actually. Awesome, man. Uh, something I might be interested in. That's uh, really cool. And uh, you, you mentioned mindset being a huge piece into all of this. So how do you guys uh, weave that in or you know have it in your program? Bam. Good question. You want to start with it? I think Andrew and I both can answer that one. Okay. Sure. Um, yeah, well... Mike made some of his his mindset videos that are in there. There's like 15 or so mindset videos to help get people on track. The big th the biggest thing though is that we created a Facebook community at the same time we launched the program, and we had no clue how influential and important that that group would be. And it's by far the most active online community I've ever seen. Um, these people they'll post videos and photos of themselves and get critiqued and all that. Uh, they help each other out tremendously. Um, but it, it was really that group that started to get us to realize how important the mindset component was. It's almost like the movements didn't even necessarily matter if you didn't have that mindset in place. People never get anywhere. So if they, all the, the physical therapists, they, they have the movements, right? But 70% of people drop out of PT after the third visit. So what the hell's the missing piece? They don't know why. They don't know why. <laughs> right. Right. And so what I've learned, Jared, this was a massive breakthrough in 2016. I started really diving into success, like Tony Robbins, Andy Frisella, getting into books about like Robert Greene and Gary Vee and um, boy, whatever, six, dude, I've hundred, just, I just started going crazy, like voracious reading books like Endurance, Shackleton's Void. And I had this breakthrough. I go, holy shit. I go, this is it. I'm like, here's the problem is that all of healthcare focuses on quick fix, everything. It focuses ev entire healthcare, Jared, every bit of it. Let me say 99%. Okay. I'm going to go 99%. I'm going to give 1% benefit of the doubt is they focus on, oh, twice a week for six weeks, do these things, try these exercises, or we'll fix your problem for you. Jared, where in life has anyone ever succeeded with those principles anywhere, ever? Nowhere. Success starts <laughs> when you open your eyes and it closes with when you close. Every step matters. Every thought matters. Everything you do matters. And you know what I did is I go, son of a bitch, that's it. That's the missing component. That mindset of success in general, success is going to be a struggle. It's going to be a challenge. There's ups and downs. It's filled with pain, pleasure. The journey back takes time, patience, and it's worth it every single time. It'll change your life. And when to, when I embraced that personally in my own life, it was like, holy shit, that's the missing component that no one has ever, that I've never seen anybody apply that to movement. So I've simply thrown those principles and overlaid those on top of the process of learning. And I personally believe that that is a major reason why our Instagram has grown, why people are sticking with the program. You're talking like 80% of people that enrolled in the movie program starting with December, 2016 are still active with the program that I've in never seen them even. in the community. I've never seen that mindset. And that was like, Holy shit. Like if I wanted to go see a doctor or somebody, how do I be successful? Well, try these things twice a week for six weeks and see if they work. 
that will never work <laughs> ever. And that's what doctors are telling people. They're just selling a better quick fix. And that's why we left healthcare. I go, it's over. It's done. Out. Goodbye. You know, and I think this might be where we have the biggest overlap is this mindset piece, because that's something uh, I learned the hard way, I'd say, early on in my coaching career. I'm, I'm really big into to programming, strength and conditioning, and then I would write these amazing programs for people, and I'd be like, oh, great, you're going to be like this perfect human being by the end of this one. And then they, they get two, three weeks in into it, and they're like, yeah, I just, I, I couldn't stick to it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? So now, uh, every athlete who signs up for our program, they, they get a three week mindset course before, you know, anything else happens. They go through the one, wow. one day at a time for three weeks. And then also we opened uh, last year, a certification program for our coaches to learn our programming and all that. It's a six week course, the first three weeks. So half the course, 100% on mindset, behavioral psychology, uh, and, and the human being, the human element, as we like to call it. Uh, so I think this is where we might have a, the biggest overlap over just being, you know, making things as simple as possible. And I can tell you wow. just from my own experiences, uh, athletes start sticking to programs more. Uh, coaches are so thankful that you taught them this stuff that they never knew because they're finally in this this place where they're they're actually helping their athletes. They're not just uh, you know giving them like you say like take two of these and call me in the morning uh, type type coaches. It's it's really really effective. Oh, I love it. And you know one of the shifts that occurred was this. This is another one is that just by people going to see a doctor in general, what happens? They they look at you. They go, tell me what's wrong with me. What do I need to do? And the big mindset shift was this. It was that I, I, I dropped my ego completely and, I'm, and I go, it doesn't matter what I think. Like, Jared, try to find somebody with bad posture and tell them, just tell them, sit up straight. Your posture is bad. What are they going to do? They're going to go, I know, I know. <laughs> right. The reason why is because they've never had the breakthroughs themselves. What we do is bite our tongue and we go through educational exercises that helps empower them, empower them to take ownership of their body and they learn and they, they learn and they love that their body is their responsibility. It's not some doctors. It's not, there's no blame game there. They are where they are because of the choices they made pure and simple. And whenever, whenever you embrace that mindset, it is, it, then that turns into the growth mindset. We're just improving every day. What do I need to learn? Now, people are actually excited to have new pain. This is crazy. People are excited to have new pain. They go, I have shoulder pain today. I'm excited because now I have an opportunity to learn about why that's happening. And that big mind shift of taking ownership of their own body was, um, boy, that shift right there was, I want to say, Andrew, that's one of the biggest shifts. That, oh, yeah. that we That's one of the biggest shifts that went from brick and mortar business to online in our communication was that we're not the expert. We don't tell them our diagnosis. I don't care about their MRI. This stuff matters. It show, it's, it's proof that something's going on with them, but it doesn't do anything to help them going forward. And especially it doesn't do anything for me to tell them what to do because try to tell somebody what to do. They're, they, they can only do it for so long. If they don't understand why, they're going to stop. That's just all there is to it. So yeah, that's, that mindset shift has been freaking amazing, man. I'm like, boy, every person, I mean, low back pain is the number one cause of disability, Jared, in the world, number one in the world. I mean, the stats are crazy with it. And it's like, man, every person needs to have this. Every single human that's got back, hip, this and that needs this. And then we need to put this information into the schools, into the kids. So they can now learn this stuff to really prevent this from ever happening. So, so I have a, yeah. a, a question about Good back question. pain in general. Um, why do you think that back pain is so prevalent? Yeah. Andrew, you want to answer that one? Uh, I partly it's, it really comes down to society and, and what, what people have labeled it as like, it's a bad thing. Um, that they, that when they start to feel pain, they should be fearful of it. I mean, there's so many, so many braces and medications and, and there's a lot of fear behind it. Um, the, the other thing is, I mean, we're just, we're sitting all day as a society and we don't change positions often. We're not moving often. We get a lot of people in the program who sit at desks all day and they're like, how can I sit properly? I'm like, don't necessarily worry about sitting properly. Cause if you're sitting there working, you're going to fall to shit. You're not, you're not going to be able to pay attention to your posture the entire time you're working. So we're like switch positions every 30 minutes, every hour, go from sitting to standing, to kneeling, to lying, to squatting, like change your positions up throughout your day, whatever your office will allow you to do. And if they're not going to allow you to stand up, you need to leave that environment. That's right. You probably don't love what you do anyways. <laughs> right. I'm, not, I'm not allowed to stand. I'm like, 
What the fuck are you doing with your life where you're allowing somebody to tell you what is the matter with you? Do what you love, man. (laughs) I love it. It's time for change. And if you must sit at a desk, then that's a sign for you to get out and just do what you love, man. We got one life only and everyone's good at something. That's incredible, guys. I really appreciate that. And and one thing I have heard you say, uh, I think you mentioned it maybe at the beginning of this podcast. I've seen it in some of your Instagram videos too. Is, uh, no one cares uh, as much about you know really yourself as uh, you know. No one's going to care as much about yourself as as you do or as you should. Uh, and that that ownership piece uh, you kind of talked about it there with uh, the fixed versus growth mindset is is huge. You know, I think people. Uh, and I've talked to other guests about this on podcasts, people specifically talking about pain or whatnot is people kind of get these problems um, and they it's almost like their baby. You know, they like they they like their problem. They 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 want people to know that they have a problem. They don't they're not. Interested I diagnosis. In right. <laughs> diagnosis. I need my support group because I have this. So the question is, is what do you, and you know what to do is to stop people and go, what do you want? They go, well, I have, what do you want? How do you want to look? How do you want to be? And it takes repeating that many times and then, and then for them to describe how they want to be. And I promise it's always opposite of how they describe themselves. They just have to get out of that past. Awesome, dude. Awesome, dude. All right. So here we're going to go to what we call the book question. There was no pre-prep for this question. So this is off the cuff here for you guys. You can, you can, uh, I'm nervous. Get, get, get together here. All right. So say there's a nationwide curriculum implemented and the president calls you up and he says, you're responsible for one chapter of the book. So every single child in America will have to read your chapter, be tested on and pass before they're allowed to graduate from high school. Your chapter specifically could prevent people from graduating from high school. Uh, so they have to know your stuff. What would your chapter be about? They can only read. <laughs> they can't read. No, they <laughs> They have to read your chapter and, and be tested on whatever your your chapter in the book is about. They have to read our chapter. What do you think, Andrew, that chapter is about? I, I, I personally think the chapter is – if we can only have one, I, I think it's about the mindset of yeah, success. Totally. I think it's about the mindset of success. I think it is this, this chapter that that tells people the real world truth about what success is. That it's not what society makes it out to be. It's not these scratch off millionaires. It's not this society of uh, of people entitled and these people are here because you're lucky. It's the truth about success in general. Is that it takes daily work. Process. It's, it's a process. It's going to be. There's going to be pain. There's going to be suffering. Failure's good. Failure's good. Pain is good. It's a sign. All these are learning lessons. And the truth is to success is to clearly guide them through visionary. I would have this chapter um, focus so much using words that would that would help people visualize what success feels like, what it smells like, and which will help them be inspire them to walk that path. Because somebody said this past weekend, you can only you can only guide people to as far as you've walked down the path. And to guide them to that about the mindset of success, because if, if people, if I believe if they have that mindset, then they, they're able to at least, if they have pain or injury or whatever, they're able to at least know that process and at least start putting, figuring out little building blocks to put in place. But that piece, the mindset piece of what it is to succeed would be the chapter. Would you agree, Andrew? Yeah, 100%. You want to add anything to that? No, it's great. It's beautiful. <laughs> And I love I love asking that question because the the answers can be so very you know someone may have expected you to say something about movement specifically right but you're talking about the success mindset so that's why I really love that like we've had other guests on who uh, talk about uh, you know, the doctor of physical therapy and his recommendation his book chapter would be about personal finances because he just doesn't feel like it was taught anywhere you know wow. it, it's just uh, some really cool answers we've gotten and I, and I absolutely love the one that you just gave the reason I didn't say movement is because you said it's something you had to read it and it had to be a written test so we can't. <laughs> Right. Yeah, because re- learning movement out of a book doesn't work. You want to know? Well, look at the most of the PTs and Kairos out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to move to the, don't support them. <laughs> the, the quick fire questions of the show. Uh, so I'm going to ask each of you the start with you, Mike. Hardest workout you've ever done? Okay, fine. Hardest, hardest workout I've ever done. Um, 
I gotta say, I'll never forget this. Fine. I'll never forget it. The very first day ever I go into CrossFit ever. There was a workout up on the board and it said Fran. And I was <laughs> like, oh, I'm like, look at this stupid workout. 21 pull-ups. What is it, Andrew? 20 pull-ups, 21 thrusters, 21, 15 pull-ups, 15 thrusters, nine. nine, nine. I never, I'll never in my life forget me throwing up and then drinking, laying on the ground outside, drinking water out of like a rusty spigot because I didn't bring a water bottle. <laughs> but I, I just climbed Mount Whitney. So I got to say that thing was pretty brutal. My, that thing was pretty brutal. I lost four toenails from that. Ooh. But um, Dang. those things are tied. Did you make it? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Something. It was uh, 17 hours. 17 hours round trip off of one hour of sleep, zero acclimation. I literally was the, I was the city slicker who showed up and took the tags off my shoes when I was up in my, I was, this is everything I have to do. Ready, go. That's awesome, man. That's, uh, and congratulations on making it to the top. Uh, I had a friend recently try and the weather, like, uh, pushed him out. Man, yeah, it got, yeah, it gets gnarly up there. Even us, it was the sunniest day ever. And we get up there, and we're like, where did this cloud come from? Like, lightning's <laughs> coming? What? It's beautiful everywhere else around. You know, what's your hardest workout? Um, well, you know, I've been doing CrossFit for a long time. It was, I think, open the open workout 16.5, and it was just a shitload of thrusters and burpees. And it was just the most grueling. You know, I mean, it was only like 13, 14 minutes long, but it was the most painful thing that I've, I've ever done. Yeah, I was we, lying on the ground for about 30 minutes. We call that the rhabdo workout around here. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you familiar with that one? Good. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so gnarly, man. Because it's been programmed twice in the open, and both times I have an article uh, I wrote on Rabdo, and both times that it was programmed, my website traffic like doubled because of how many people got Rabdo specifically from that workout. Uh, so yeah. very, very challenging one. All right, that was really gnarly. In your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? <laughs> The best activity for building mental toughness. The best activity for mental toughness. Well, um, the best activity. Well, I'll, I'll just. Go ahead, Andrew. I mean, for, for me, it's kind of creating that daily schedule. I don't necessarily write anything down, but I wake up and I, I plan what my day is going to look like every single day. And I know like the exact times I'm going to do things and that. That's just that's me setting up my day every day, like right when I wake up. I don't write it down, and I've always done that since I was a little kid, and uh, that's that's been really really amazing for me. I got a really good one actually. Uh, I, the number one activity that I that has helped me with mental toughness is to have found and surround myself with a group of mentors who I look up to. I have I have like five different mentors, each one has uh, helps me in a different way in life, but all of them are older than me. All of them are much more successful than I am. And all of them have done chosen different paths, but spending time around them allows me to see, I can do this. I can do this. It's like that apprenticeship. Yeah, it's like an apprenticeship model. So having mentors in my life that I regularly meet and talk to is the number one way because that allows me, I go, I know I can work through this stuff and get there if they did, period. Yeah, I, I mean, mentors are extremely powerful. I, I attribute a lot of uh, any success I've achieved to having mentors. How did you go about finding uh, these five people in your life? He talks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Let me see. I'll sum it up real fast. Um, it just so happens the owner of the building we rent right now, his name is Jim. He owns Catalina Design, which is a like a like a national uh, – They what they do is they set up they design hotel – I'm sorry. They furnish hotels and apartment buildings. Like when you go into a hotel, all the paintings, all that stuff, he does that. He's been doing this for 30 years and he just so happens that he's the – his office is right above me. And then him and I have had an amazing relationship for four years. Uh, I work with him every week. Um, it's nice. He's right upstairs. He gets – he sees like – I think he, I think he works with me because he sees like excitement in what I do. He's he's pretty much got things dialed in right now. Like he just knows how to turn dials, so he likes the excitement that I go through and he helps me. My other mentor is he Jim's my day to day business mentor, where he like helps me with immediate tasks. I'm like Jim, we're gonna do this vision in the future. We're gonna be law. He goes, what about your accounting? Did you take care of that this month? No, no, not yet. He goes, how do you expect to work that vision if you don't have the accounting taken care of now? <laughs> Son of a bitch, Jim, you're always right. <laughs> Keeping and you on the path. Right. And my lifestyle mentor is David. I literally met him at a 
I, I hunt grouse in Wisconsin. I was on a gravel road bar. There was two people in there, myself and this dude that was like, you up here grouse hunting ends up being, uh, I ended up talking with him, staying at like his, he calls it his shack, which is his million dollar freaking cabin in the middle of thousands of acres in Wisconsin. It's his shack. He owns a hundred and some million dollar medical device company. And that dude's my lifestyle mentor. That dude, he doesn't work for three months out of the year. He just hunts birds, goes to his kids games. He just like has the best friends, has just loves life. And he like, he's himself. He's no filter coming out whatsoever. Every, every company photo is a hundred people smiling. He's always flipping off the camera. I'm like, dude, that's on your website. How <laughs> do that? This dude awesome. is absolutely, would you agree how wild he is? Yeah, he's crazy. How do you describe him, Andrew? <laughs> just unfiltered. I don't know. Just does whatever he wants and has, has fun with it in life. Has fun with it. He's like fun. Wow. You could be successful and have a great time in life. And you don't have to follow the rules about working certain hours. He goes, I work my ass off for nine months out of the year so I could take those three months off. I'm like, well, that's one way to do it. And, um, Shane was a patient of mine. He came in as a patient and Shane, uh, is an amazing dude. He, he's the founder of a company called maintenance.net that sold to, um, I think Adobe for 160 million bucks. And Shane is the, he's the long-term strategist. He helps me like see the future and like put blocks in place to make that happen. Um, I have a couple more mentors, but those are like my three main mentors in my life. So one, just by me giving back, right? What I already was good at being a doctor at the time, which kind of guys, just so everyone knows, we don't see patients anymore. Everyone's like, how do I set an appointment? I'm like, that ship sailed. It's <laughs> over. It's over. <laughs> um, um, but, but just doing what I love, right? Doing what I was good at for one of them was I was good at working on people and helping them in person. That's why I met one mentor. Just so happened randomly, the place gym, the owner. And also another thing, doing what I love. Then was grouse hunting. I ran into somebody else. So that's how I met those mentors. And uh, the, also the book that I recommended, Mastery, goes over very specific ways to find mentors. So I highly recommend that book. Awesome, man. All right. So for both of you, if you could only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? One piece, Andrew. Man. This is gnarly. <laughs> I'll tell you what I would pick. I'd pick a dumbbell. You know, I'd pick a I'd pick like a midweight kettlebell. I'd pick like a I would say I would say a 35 pound dumbbell for me. And I would just do bicep curls. <laughs> <laughs> All day. That's awesome. I would pick a dumbbell for sure because I could do I could do rows with that. I could work my back. I could do clean and presses. I could do any kind of pressing motion. I mean, I, he's I, a coach. I think he knows. Yeah, but for the <laughs> listeners, for the <laughs> listeners. Yeah. And, and so, Andrew, you're on the kettlebell for you? Yeah, because you could do all of what he's saying and about 300 times the more. The kettlebell so. hurts my wrist. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> my wrist hurts where the weight hits it. <laughs> all right, guys. So here's the question of the show. Best advice you have for becoming a better human, 100% open-ended. Andrew, want to start with this one? Dot, dot, dot. Um, I, I, I probably would like to refer back to a couple a quote for this one that I usually say. Sweet, so you can finish it off better than mine. Um, I... Well, repeat the question. I'm thinking so much right now. The best advice you have for becoming a better human. Oh, man. It's got to come down to looking at the positives of every situation. Um, like the worst things that can happen to you always have a positive and it's it's usually going to benefit you in, in the future. I mean, it's everything. is once you, once you alter that mindset, you're going to be a significantly happier human being. Man, I would say, Andrew, like – even our, our attitude in here, like we laugh even more like something is an absolute technical disaster. Oh, yeah. Andrew, we're like, we're going under. But we do it in like a fun way. Like we always – I don't think we really – I think we make everything fun and lighthearted. Yeah. Sometimes it will hit us and we'll be like, damn. And then we just start making fun of it within five minutes. <laughs> within five. But I want to give – I'll give so, something to – this is from um, Mastery, the book. This is something I've read very often. Um it goes, uh, you want to learn as many skills as possible. 
following the direction that circumstances lead you, but only if they are related to your deepest interests. You value the process of self-discovery and enjoy making things of the highest quality. You avoid the trap of following one set career path. You're not sure of where all this will lead, but you're taking full advantage of the openness of information. You see what type of work suits you and avoid what doesn't at all costs. You move by trial and error. This is your 20s. You're not wandering about because you're afraid of commitment, but because you're expanding your skill base. When you're ready to settle on something, ideas and opportunities will readily present themselves to you. When this happens, all of the skills you've acquired will prove to be invaluable. You'll become a master of combining them in ways that are unique and suited to your individuality. You may settle in this field for many years, accumulating more knowledge and information and skills along the way. Those who follow a single career path end up hitting a dead end in their 40s, leading to boredom. That is the journey that I wish I would have if I were to do it again, I would have followed that to a T starting at 20 years old. I love that, man. I love, I love both of those. And I think just over the course of this episode, you guys have provided some tremendous information from book rec- recommendations to mindset to, you know, movement suggestions. Uh, it's been really incredible stuff. So for everyone listening out there, uh, what's the best place for them to learn more about you and what you guys are doing? Yeah. So we provide, um, Definitely recommend you guys start with Instagram. It's move you, M-O-V-E, the letter U underscore official. I uh, definitely recommend you start there. We put out daily videos that are fun, enter- that are entertaining, educational, and they give you little tips. And all of all of those exercises that we give, they they if you spend 30 seconds on each one every day, it will transform your life. Um, definitely go to moveyou.com. Uh, we have Tons of free resources there for you. We have a free starter program for people. You have access to a free webinar. We have the uh, our Move You Favors page. So people that always want to know what products we use, what books we read, that's all on our Move You Favors. And that's the place to learn about the Move You program. You can learn about the Move You program on moveyou.com. See if it's a right fit. You can watch the videos, all the testimonials in there. We just make that. The starter program, the, I made that program to be a, as a public service tool based on receiving over 1,500 messages a month for like a year and a half. I created a problem to answer most people's questions. So I highly recommend everybody starts with that starter program. Yeah, we got a categorized exercise library coming and a merchandise store. We'll have some goofy sayings on shirts and some empowering sayings and, you know, we're Playing around with some stuff. Yeah. Fix your shit. That's going to be one of the shirts. <laughs> Fix your shit. They love that one. <laughs> awesome, guys. I'll link to all of that in the show notes. Definitely go check out everything uh, that Mike and Andrew are doing. Uh, and I checked out their Instagram. It's awesome information. And I've checked out their website, and it's really great. So go check all, all those things. Uh, Mike and Andrew, thank you so much for being on the show. Jared, thank awesome, you man. for doing what you do. Thanks for reaching out to us, man. It means a lot. You know, it. It's just if it wasn't for stuff like this, you know, you help remind us that we're on the right path by somebody amazing like you who's on an amazing mission. Dude, everything you do is set up to be simple. Even the way we signed up for this podcast, dude, you just understand simplicity and, dude, you're empowering people. And, dude, hats off to you, man. Great job on your end. Thank you for the work you do. Yeah, I love the questions you're asking us. Oh, keeping dude, us I'm like, wow, this is fun. <laughs> it's awesome, man. It's I appreciate awesome. it, guys. Yeah, man, all the support. Thank you, Jared.
Losers always whine about their best.